hello world. Welcome to Monday Media Review here in Two Guys on the Couch. I am George. And I'm Joe. We're here to wade through the bullshit and give you our opinions on upcoming movies and games. This week, all we have for you is a movie review, and we're going to split it in half. The first half of the video, we're going to give our review for Inception, and then the second half of the video is a little spoiler uh, debate going on about the ending, because like most Christopher Nolan movies that are not Batman, he kind of has an a twist. open ending. Yeah. Not not a twist. He makes you think, or he, he attempts to try to make you think. There's a, you know, in, open to interpretation ending. So we're going to put a spoiler warning up now, and then when we get to it, we're going to, another spoiler warning, because we're going to discuss it, and hopefully you guys can chime in your opinions under the video. You create the world of the dream. We bring the subject into that dream, and they fill it with their subconscious. His first like mind-bending kind of movie he's done since Memento, because I didn't really feel Insomnia was all that mind-bending of a movie. It wasn't. People who think, oh, it's no, it's not. No. And he is true to form. Yeah, Christopher yeah. Nolan, always, always top-notch, always pleasing. And this, the story of it, he obviously did his research on sleep and about dreams and the way the mind works because it's heavily woven throughout the whole movie. Yes. And it felt like somebody who actually knew what the hell they were talking about wrote this. Which is a, which is a, a very big oddity in uh, Hollywood because apparently Hollywood never does research. You're going to mock me. At least get your facts straight. The story itself, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is really complex and it's the smartest movie you know you're gonna see in ages and and one reviewer actually said that it was uh this movie's too smart for you yeah I never felt that at all through the whole movie I thought it was pretty cut and dry mm -hmm. beat for beat through the movie he had exposition where it needed exposition to explain things nothing was confusing I if, mean if this movie confused you then either you're stupid or you didn't pay attention mm -hmm. or both <sighs> cheese and crackers now the action in this movie is Christopher Nolan's most action-packed film he's ever done. That, yeah. e that even includes counting Batman. Yeah, the, I mean, Batman had it has action moments, but it's mostly just talking. Where this movie, yeah, there is a lot of talking, but there is a lot of action, especially in the third act. Yeah, a lot of shit happening. Yeah, because in this, there's layers of upon layers of dreams, dreams within dreams, and dreams can collapse, as you see in the trailer, and things are coming apart and that happens heavily and it's you know, it's neat how they also explain how the time flows within the dream and it's 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 a really well done well told story with great actors that's improv i made that up off the top of my head hey i want to spit on that person acting lets you do this because the action is much more elevated than anything he's done these special effects are much more elevated than everything he's ever done. Yes. And he combines practical with a lot of CG as well, and every part of it just was seamless. Yeah. And what's cool is the reason he didn't have fantastical worlds is because they actually explained in a scene with Ellen Page, if you mess with the world too much, the subconscious will actually reject it. You have to craft a world because they want the person inside the world to believe it's real. That's why you're not going to have you're going to have a world like New York and not a world like Avatar, mm -hmm. because it would just the the mind would reject it. Mm -hmm. And just the the way the each cast member in the movie had a specific role in the movie, like Alan Page, who was an architect and built the dream world, mm -hmm. and Leonardo DiCaprio, his specialty was to actually extract things. He was an extractor. Just each person in the in the uh, the cast had a specific role to play and they needed to do their job 100% for everything to work it's really well woven together and this is the first movie I've seen in a, probably a really long time since friggin his life since Dark Knight because no one's the only one that does this where he can have a movie with characters and they can have jokes in it without a single comic relief character yes because I hate comic relief and I mean, there so were... many movies just flood there was a, there was some comedy in it, but it was uh, it didn't come from like a com comedic relief character. It came from the individuals being sarcastic or just a smartass. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. For a review score out of Dreamcatchers, yeah, I'm 
going to follow with the pack and go five out of five just because this movie is top to bottom almost perfect with the exception of the end in my opinion drags on a little too long and they keep cutting back to a the same shot over and over again it's like yeah we get it we don't need to see that shot and they just felt like they tried to extend the ending to make it longer than it really needed to be but other than that i mean movie's damn near perfect mm -hmm. i'm also going to go uh five out of five dream catchers um, I think that, like he said, it's almost perfect. Um, I don't agree with the, the with the way he described the ending. I felt that the reason he did that was to show the time relevance between the layers of the dream. Oh, I understand that, but I felt it was unnecessary. Yeah, but there's going to be stupid people who wouldn't get that. You understand there's going to be a lot of people who don't. Mm -hmm. um, but I really honestly, I mean, yes, it may have dragged a few times. I don't think at the end, but somewhere in the middle it dragged a little. But besides that... It didn't drag to the point where it's like, come on, something fucking happened. No, it was just, okay, I get it, and they moved on. Yeah, it wasn't like the rave sequence in uh, Matrix 2. Oh, you mean the orgy? Yeah, it just goes on forever, and it's like, this does not need to be in the movie. Yeah, so we both give it five out of five dream catchers. Uh, Here, we're going to put up a spoiler warning. From now on, we're actually going to talk about things within the film, so if you don't want to know anything about it, don't watch this part. Spoilers. And we're also going to discuss kind of the open-ending ending... Uh, I have one opinion, he has a complete, you know, the opposite opinion, because there really is only two opinions. Now, yeah, there really, there's not an in-between for this one. Yeah. Now, at the end of the movie, when Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, gets off the plane, and he goes home, and he's in his house, and his kids are there, his grandfather's there, and he has his little dreidel, or yeah. not dreidel, what are he, those things called? Top. It's a top. Top, and he spins it. Uh, you know, you see that it's not, mo it's, it's not falling. Which, if it doesn't fall, that means he's still in the dream. But then it cuts away and cuts back, and you see it kind of wobble. It, it wobbles a little, which tells you that it might fall. But he cuts away just before it falls. So it's the open ending making you wonder whether it's gonna, he's still in the dream or whether he's not. I feel that he's not in the dream. I think he's in the dream, and the, my, the reasoning behind it, the most glaring, is the children are the same age as they are throughout the whole movie. Throughout the entire movie, I just, I just don't, just, I just don't agree with the, with that fact. It's like, yes, it doesn't explain how long he was gone. It never said how long he was gone. You say, oh, he's been gone for but a while. Right it's, but it, it never said. You're led to believe that he's been gone for a while. No, you're not. You, you're just led to believe that he's been gone, but then they don't know when he'll be back. And also, one thing, this we never discussed this, but I, I, I'm just thinking about this. Who the fuck were the children staying with? Because their mother's dead, and he wasn't there. On the phone. Busted. No, on the phone they were talking to the grand, to his mother, to uh, the grandmother. Grandma, because uh, grandmother's still in America. Be because remember they were staying because the reason he gave the bag full well, of toys know, to that... the grandfather was because he's going to go home and see his wife. I uh, brought these for you to give to the kids when you have a chance. It'll take more than the occasional stuffed animal to convince those children they still have a father. I fully have to believe that. He was out of dream. He succeeded. I mean, because there was no real point. There's no. There was no set point where he was supposed to start in the dream. He came out of it every time. And I assume that the entire movie took place in a dream. But then he they has never left limbo. The entire movie, he is still in limbo. See, I don't believe that because when he was in limbo with his wife, it was just him and the wife. There was nobody else. He created this entire world where there was nobody. I get that. But then while in limbo, he created a fifth level where now he is inside a dream thinking he's in the real world, but he's not in the real I, world. I don't think it plays out like that. I think it's I think it's very more simplistic, and he's out of the dream. He succeeded. I don't know. The, whole, the, the children, it kills me. They're the same age. Uh... The fact that the grandfather just meeting him at the well, airport and he, he was, never tells him that he's... Remember when he was on the phone with the children, they sounded really young still, too. <sighs> still, I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, was, he wasn't in the dream. He succeeded. The dude made the call. He's like, okay, you can, go, you can be in America now. <sighs> I don't know. It's still... No. You're not convincing me that he's, <laughs> he's in the dream. Like, it's, it's still in the dream. Uh, let us know what you think. If you saw the movie, tell us what you think, whether he's in the dream or not. Prove him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, check out all our videos over at TuxedoCast.com, MediaSlayProductions.com, and our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash TuxedoCats, where you can comment in all those places. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Twitter.com slash TuxedoCats, and at Facebook.com slash TuxedoCats, where you can drop a message there as well. 
Uh, also, check out our webcomic, Artificial, over at robotslove.com. Update it weekly every Thursday with a new page. Well, for two guys on the couch, I'm Joe. And I am George. We'll see you next time here on the couch. Dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something is actually strange.